Well, uh, Julian Assange has repeatedly insisted that he is innocent of crimes. Uh, he put out an op-ed, you know, basically detailing the reasons that he thinks that's the case. Now, his attorney, of course, as is his job, is standing by his client. He claims that prosecutors are manipulating this case for political reasons. Here he is talking to our own Judge Napolitano last night. Take a look. This is true journalism. This is journalism where the truth, the unvarnished truth, is being revealed. And we see that uh, news organizations uh, are revealing that governments are saying one thing in private and a completely different thing to their electorates. And, of course, right. the place they pay for that is at the ballot box. Brett Stevens is the deputy editorial page editor at The Wall Street Journal. He's also a foreign affairs uh, columnist, very well known in that, uh, in that area. Brett, welcome. Good, Good to have to you here. here. Uh, you've written about Julian Assange and whether you think this is a prosecutable offense. What do you think now that he's in court in London? Well, it's funny. He's, he's, he's in court in London on an extradition request right. from the Swedish government on rape allegations. Yes. Um, there are questions about the legality of his bank account in Switzerland, but the real charges, the ones that ought to right. concern us, are whether he's guilty of violating the 1917 Espionage Act and possibly other mm -hmm. acts. Uh, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein in the Wall Street Journal's editorial pages today, Democrat from California, mm -hmm. uh, is saying that uh, uh, is saying that he is. I think I agree with uh, I agree with that argument. He is willfully disclosed secret uh, U.S. information. And by the way, not just the diplomatic cables that we've been talking about for the last uh, 10 days or so, really even more seriously right. what he's been, what the disclosures about Afghanistan from the summer. Yeah, and as you point out, people were not all that outraged in the administration about the Iraq and Afghanistan disclosures this summer. They seem to have gotten their feathers a little bit more ruffled over this one. Uh, but I think this is going to come back to bite Robert Gibbs, perhaps. His take on this at a, in a news conference uh, in the White House briefing room uh, yesterday or the day before. Let's take a look at that. Uh, look, our foreign policy and our country is stronger than one guy with one website. We should not and, and we should never be afraid of one guy who popped down $35 and bought a web address. Our foreign policy is stronger than that. We're a stronger country than that. We're not scared of one guy with one keyboard and a laptop. You've said that you hope that this whole thing forces the administration to take a more grown-up perspective, I think, was, was sort of what you said on, on yeah, foreign affairs. Yeah, Gibbs is not exactly the administration grown-up here. I mean, look, when uh, his, his uh, rhetoric reminds me a little bit of 9-11. I mean, here you were talking about just a handful of people mm -hmm. with operating with... Uh, uh, minimum tools able to inflict tremendous damage. And I think it's important conceptually that what we think of what WikiLeaks not as whistleblowing, it certainly isn't that, it's cyber warfare against the United States. It's cyber warfare against our troops and our ability to collect intelligence on the battlefield and against our diplomats uh, and their ability to have frank conversations with our allies and partners around the world. You know, you know, I think you've touched on what may be the biggest point here, and that is, is this a lesson for us in terms of where we need to go in national security? And as Diane Feinstein pointed out in her piece, you know, you have to prove intent and that it was damaging to our national security in order to, you know, put forward the Espionage Act to this. Where do we go from here in terms of protecting our systems in, in the future? It's a wake-up call. Well, for one thing, I mean, we seem to believe that uh, uh, Assange, WikiLeaks got all this information from one private in the U.S. Army with a grudge. Do you believe that? Um, yeah, I do believe that because after 9-11 we created uh, intranet systems where we wanted to foster jointness. We wanted mm -hmm. you know, one agency of government to know what the other one was doing. Clearly it should not have been uh, so easily compromised at such a low level. So we have to have technical fixes in terms of who is able to see what. But I also think we need to, re or we need to rethink the way um, we look at these sorts of acts. People, I think, are besotted with the idea that this is a follow-up to the Pentagon Papers, a great liberal icon about free speech. This is not about free speech. This is about espionage. This is cyber warfare. And Assange has to be treated precisely that way, as an enemy combatant intent on harming the interests of the United States. Do you think that, the, that we're about to see the administration sort of stiffen its sinews on, on this issue? Because uh, Holder has said, now we take this very seriously. We saw what Gibbs said a couple of days ago. President not planning to speak out uh, about it today. Well, I, I wish they would have taken it seriously five, uh, five months ago, but at a minimum, Great Britain is an ally. We should have an extradition request right. for Britain to extradite him to the United States to try him uh, under the espionage uh, law. We have Iceland, where WikiLeaks is, yeah. is, is uh, domiciled, is also a NATO ally. We should be bringing pressure to bear to shut this thing down. All right, Brett, thank you very much. Good to get your take on it. Good Brett to be Stevens here. from the Wall Street Journal.